Hello and welcome to the second part of the series on zone recovery. In the first part of the series I explained the zone recovery concept. If you missed the first part I've left a link in the description below the video and the concept will be important to understanding the second part video. In this part I'm going to create a class that can be included in your expert advisor to manage the zone recovery position for you. I'll start this by writing a class for MQL4 and then I'll show the changes and the extra code that's needed for MQL5 and then I'll be demonstrating the class in an expert advisor. Um, I'll be using my usual moving average cross expert advisor for this test bed on this demonstration and surprisingly on backtest the EA even made a profit. There is something important to note. I'll show how to write the code for MQL5 but this is for a hedging account not a netting account. Zone recovery if you look back at the first episode of this series in the standard definition it's a hedging approach itself because it does require opening positions in opposite directions and while it's possible to modify the approach for a netting implementation of MetaTrader that would introduce too many variables and make this video too complex because it would be coping with too many things at one time so I haven't done that if there is a need to show that then please leave comments below and if there are enough people making the comments then I might make a supplementary video and show how to apply this to a netting account. Finally before I jump into the code these are my key objectives for this class. Firstly I want to create an object and specify to that object the key zone criteria which are the target the zone size and then any additional pips to include which I mentioned again in the first video. Second, once the EA places a trade, I want to simply hand that trade or the ticket number for that trade to the object and then have that object manage the position including opening and closing of trades until that full position is realized and I hit either the top or bottom target. Finally then, I have not included any restart or recovery in this code just to keep the video to a reasonable length. That means that once a position's open, you'll need to keep the EA running until the position comes to a close. Otherwise, on restart, the class will not pick up the existing positions. Uh, you can take a shot at um, updating the class yourself to handle restart and recovery, but otherwise I'll be covering it in a later part of the series. So now, let's go to the code and see how this is going to work. Now I've already created the MQH file here. I've created under the include folder and underneath that I have my orchard folder classes and then my zone recovery. So I'm here in the editor showing the zone position.mqh. I've already created files for zone position MQL4 and MQL5. I'm going to be using these to handle the differences between MQL4 and MQL5 so that I don't have to completely duplicate the class. So at the moment I just have a comment and property strict. I'm going to create an enum which I'm calling enum zone position status and I can use this to tell the status of a position that the zone recovery is handling and I've got three states defined here closed obviously when there is nothing open open when I do have a position running and closing just to handle the situation where I might have started closing the individual trades in a position but haven't finished yet and then I also need to capture some information from the closing activities. So I've defined a structure that I'm calling S zone result, and it has a success, which basically says whether I've been successful in closing trades, uh, the total volume that I've closed. So that's just the sum of the lots that have been closed. And then this vol profit, which I'm going to calculate by multiplying the lots in a trade by the difference between the open and closing price. Uh, you'll see that when I do that later. Now, because I am going to be maintaining this separate file for MQL4 and MQL5, I'm actually calling this class C zone position common, and then the MQL4 and MQL5 will inherit from that, and those inheritances will actually be called C zone position. I'm creating two private variables, m init message and m init result. Uh, you might have seen these in some of my other videos. I'm going to be using those to store the result from initialization in case the initialization of this class fails. And then I have some protected member variables. Uh, these are protected so that they can be used by these subclasses that are in the zone position MQL4 and MQL5 files. So the first is the chart symbol. Uh, the next then the initial price which is the price where that one trade that I want to hand in when I'm creating a new position. That's the price where that trade was opened. 
and the initial volume, so the number of lots in that initial trade. The magic number, which will be passed in from the trade as well, and the comment. So all of these we picked up from that one trade when it's passed in. Then because I'm going to be maintaining a number of trades as part of the position, I'm creating an array of ticket numbers. And this M direction tells me which direction the zone is currently moving in. So that will obviously change as the price crosses the zone and I open opposite trades. Target is the price difference between the entry point of the zone and an exit point. I'm not storing this in points or pips, this is actual price difference. Uh, and the same with zone size. So if we're looking at a US dollar trade, for example, the target might be 100 pips, then target would be 0 0.01. And zone size, if it's 40 pips, would be 0 0.004. Uh, if you want to enter these as part of the EA as pips or points, then you would be doing the conversion inside the EA and handing the final values in here. And this supplement is that little extra value that I pointed out in the first video just to cope with some of the unpredictable numbers like uh, commission and spread because obviously spread changes during the life of the trade. So you can just add a little bit extra in this supplement just to try to cope with that. Then these are working variables. Once the zone has been established, it obviously has a high value, a low value, a target high, which is where we will close out the trades if the price reaches the high, and a target low, which is where we'd close the trades if the price reaches the low. And finally, I'm keeping track of the total number of buy lots that I have opened and the total number of sell lots that I have opened. And then of course the status, which is this enum zone position status that I pointed out earlier. And now I have some utility functions. Uh, these aren't strictly part of managing the zone, they're just generally useful functions. And again, you may have seen these in some of my other videos. Uh, the init error, which simply takes the message and an init result and stores them in those two initialization values so that they can be read later by the EA. Uh, and then of course, the init result and init message functions that will give those values back. And then I have volume step. This is going to be needed as part of the lot calculation and it tells me the smallest size that I can change lots by in MetaTrader. And this can vary by symbol. Uh, and it's typically 0 0.01 for a currency, which means that I can increase my volume size by 0 0.01. But for other commodities, it may be 1 or 0.1. And that means I can't simply go from a lot size of 1 to 1.01. I might need to go from 1 to 1.1 or 1 to 2. And to get this, I'm using the symbol info double function, passing in the symbol and returning this symbol volume step. And then I've also got ask and bid. Now in MetaTrader 4, there is an ask and a bid value, but that doesn't exist in MetaTrader 5. So to keep this compatible and make as little code change as possible, I've actually created functions called ask and bid. And these, again, using symbol info double, passing in the symbol, and I'm getting back the ask or the bid value for the symbol. Now I have some pure virtual functions. Uh, these are going to be used internally. They're protected so that the subclasses or the child classes of this can use them. The first one is init position where I'm basically setting up the position when it's new. And the reason I've created this function is because this will be different between MetaTrader 4 and 5. And by adding this equals zero, this is what makes it a pure virtual function. It is not possible to create an instance of this C zone position common class. You will now have to always create a child class and that child class must implement this virtual function. So that's what this equals zero is doing by creating a pure virtual function. It ensures that the child class implements this function. And then the same for open trade, which I'm going to be using because the zone will need to open trades if the price crosses the zone. So I have the open trade function where I'm simply passing in the direction that I want to open the trade in, the size of that new trade, and the price where it will open, which is typically the top or bottom of the zone. And that's also a pure virtual function. And finally, close trades. And this will just close all of the trades in the position. 
and populate this result value, which is the S zone result type. And again, that's a pure virtual function. So these three have been created as pure virtuals because they will be different between MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. And now some functions that are not specifically different between MetaTrader 4 and 5, but I may want later to inherit from those and override them in other classes. So these are protected functions. There's the simple init function where I'm just capturing the target size, zone size, and the zone supplement, which by default will be zero if you don't supply that. I'll be calling this from the constructor. Uh, the add trade, which once I've opened a new trade as part of the zone, this function will simply add that trade into the list of tickets that I'm, that I'm managing. And then add new trade will take care of opening the new trade and then adding it to that list of tickets. So the add new trade takes the direction and the price. And then this close position, which I would be calling when the price reaches either the target high or the target low, and that will simply close all of the trades in the position and reset everything back to zero. And then lots is a critical function because this actually calculates the size of each trade. Every time I open a new trade because I've crossed the zone, I need to calculate the size that trade would have to be in order to achieve a no loss situation. And that simply takes direction and then it will use the other member variables, which would be the total buy lots and total sell lots to calculate the size here. And then public functions, obviously the constructor, so C zone position common, and I'll be passing in the target size, the zone size, and that supplement value, and calling the init function, which we have here. So that's part of setting up this class initial, or setting up the object initially. And once it's been set up with that zone size, I can then simply reuse that object and just give it a new ticket number each time I open a new position. And a destructor, but there is nothing in here. Then I've got a number of get functions. Uh, I'm not going to be using these. I've simply created them in case the EA might want them. Um, there's a get status. Well, that actually is used by the EA uh, to determine if the position is still open. And then I have target high, target low, zone high and zone low, which I'm not using at the moment, but they're always useful to include these kind of functions in a, in a class. Then open position. This is public because the EA itself will, once it's created this class, We'll want to later call it with the open position method, passing in the ticket of the trade that's just been opened to tell this class to begin a position. And then on tick must be called at every tick because I'm obviously monitoring the price tick by tick as it moves to know when I cross the zone. So the on tick function handles that price movement and determining when the position needs to open up a new trade. Start with the init function. C zone position common init, same arguments that are declared above. So first the init method, and this is called by the constructor. Uh, the arguments are the same as we've defined above. First thing I'm doing is simply saying it's a new instance of this object and therefore the position is closed. So I'm setting the status to closed and I'm resizing the list of tickets to zero, which will make sure I have no tickets that are being tracked. And then I'm just capturing the values that have been passed in into the M target M zone size and M supplement. And since nothing can really go wrong in here, I'm just going to return in it succeeded. The next action that your EA would want to take would be to open a position then. So here's the open position method, simply passing in a ticket number. And as I've mentioned here, there's no check that you're not trying to open a position while there is already a position open. So if this object is already managing the existing position and you call the open position method as it is here, then it's simply going to close the position. It's not even going to close the position. It's just going to say that position is already closed and it will forget about any tickets it was managing there. So it's up to your EA to check the status first and make sure that there is not currently an open position. So this is the same initialization we saw earlier. Um, I start out by saying that the status is closed and resize the list of tickets to zero. And then inside the open position, I'm calling the init position. This is one of the virtual functions we declared above, the pure virtuals. There it is, init position. So I'm expecting this to exist in the MQL4 or MQL5 files. And that hand takes the ticket number, 
and returns a boolean itself so the if not in it position so if that returns a false value then i'm simply returning false from this open position and we'll get to the mql4 implementation of that in a moment and then we'll handle mql5 later then i'm calling the add trade method which we haven't written yet but we saw that was defined earlier that simply adds this ticket into the m tickets array and then depending on the direction and the direction has been set in this init position method uh, it, remember it's a global variable inside the class so init position has access to that and it will set the direction based on the ticket that's been handed in so if that was a buy ticket then i'm setting the zone high to the initial price so this is the top of the zone which will be at the point where we entered that trade and then i'm setting the zone low to the zone high minus the zone size which is one of the arguments we passed in when this object was created and my total buy lots of course is the initial volume which was also set in the init position method and my sell lots is zero because this is the first trade and it's a buy trade so i have no sell lots and if it's not an order type buy then it must be a sell so my zone low now is the entry price and the zone high will be the low plus the zone size and then of course in this case sell lots is the initial volume and buy lots are zero and then the target high is the zone high plus target and the zone low or the target low is the zone low minus target so these two calculations are common whether it's a buy or a sell trade to begin with and if all of that succeeds and i get through then i'm simply saying the status is now open and then returning true so let me go to the zone position mql4 and i'll show you how i've set that up to handle this init position so here's the zone position mql4 it still has a property strict because i want to make sure that i'm maintaining the right protocols i'm including the zone position mqh file and this is a relative include i've used the quotation marks instead of the angle brackets so i'm pulling this zone position in and then the class in my mql4 file is c zone position i'm not naming it specifically for mql4 because i will either be using mql4 or mql5 i can't use both at the same time and this is the zone position that I want to use in my EA. So it makes sense that this is simply called C zone position. And of course it's inheriting public inheritance from C zone position common. These are the virtual functions or what were the pure virtual functions in zone position common, but they don't have the equals zero here because this is where they will be implemented. And these are the same definitions that I had before, the init position, the open trade and the closed trades. And then because I'm not using a default constructor, and a default constructor is one that takes no arguments, the only constructors I have in these classes take arguments, so I need to define a constructor for the zone position, and that's just taking the same arguments as the zone position common, and then all I'm doing with this syntax, colon, C zone position common, and passing those same three values, that just calls the constructor for the parent class. And because the constructor for the parent class handles all of the initialization, I don't need to worry about anything here. So then this init position, this is the one that's being called during that initialization. Again, it's taking the ticket number. And the reason I have this, because the MQL4 code is different to the MQL5 code. While I could have put statements or conditional compilation statements inside the common class, I just find it easier to read this way. So the first thing I want to do, can I select the ticket number that's been supplied? If, I, if the order select for that ticket number fails, so if not order select, then I'm just going to raise an error, couldn't find that ticket number, and return false. And remember going back to zone position.mqlh, if I return false from the init position, then I'm going to return false from the initialization. The next check if order close time is equal to is not equal to zero so if not order close time is equal to zero that tells me that the tickets already closed so if for some reason you've handed in a ticket number for a closed order and in that case again an error ticket number is already closed and finally 
I can only handle buy and sell trades in this. This is not for handling buy stop or sell limit trades. So I'm checking the order type is type buy or sell. And if it's not one of those two, then again, an error message. Zones can only apply to buy and sell, not limit or stop orders and return false. Then I'm populating those global variables, symbol, comment, magic number, direction, initial price, and initial volume are all being captured using the order symbol, order comment, order magic number, order type, order open price, and order lots. And this is because these functions don't exist in MQL5 that I have to have it here in this function. So now back to zone position. So that completes the open position function. There is still this add trade that we'll get to later, but the next logical thing to look at is the on tick. So as I said, on tick should be called by the EA at every tick. Uh, if you wait until the end of a bar, then you might find the price has moved well beyond the side of the zone. So you really need to call this on every tick. You'll still get some slippage, but it's much better than waiting till the end of a bar. So that's why I've called this on tick. So here is the zone position common on tick function. Uh, first thing I'm checking, if the current status is closed, then there's no point in carrying on, so I'm just returning. If the current status is closing, and I mentioned this earlier, I have a status that's called closing because if I'm in the middle of closing all of the trades for the position, then I want to keep doing that. So if you call the on tick while it's in this closing status, it will simply go to close the position, which basically is trying to complete the close and then return. Assuming it's not an either of those two, then we must be in an open situation. Uh, so I'm just declaring a value for price because I want to capture a different price depending whether I'm buying or selling at the moment. Now, M direction, remember, is my current direction that I'm trading in, or it's the direction of the last trade that the zone opened. So in, if we're in the buying mode, then the price is the bid price. And if the price is greater than the target high, so I've now gone above the top of the zone past the target, then I've reached a, a closing position. So I'm just going to close everything and return. And we'll see the close position function also a little bit later. Else, so if the price has not reached the target high, if it's gone below the zone low, so now we're, we're in a buying mode, I've either reached the target high and then I want to close everything, or I've perhaps gone below the zone low, and that means I now have to reverse the direction. So what I'm gonna do there is add a new trade of type sell at that price, and that will effectively reverse the direction and create the new trade. And this else statement, just if the direction is not buy, then it must be sell. So if direction is sell, then the price is ask, and otherwise the situation is very similar but in this case is the price below the target low rather than above the target high. And if it is below the low, then I'm gonna close the position. And if the price has gone above the zone high, then I want to add a new trade of type buy, which reverses the direction of my zone again. And that's the on tick function. So now the add trade function. This is called when you open a position because you're passing in the ticket number from the outside. It's also going to be called by the add new trade function because that will open a trade and want to add that trade to the array of tickets. And this is very simple. Uh, I'm simply getting the array size of my tickets array into a variable, and then I'm resizing that array by one. So resizing it to count plus one, and then I'm just assigning that ticket number to the end of the array and returning. So it's a very simple function. And then the add new trade goes with that. So as we've seen, I'm passing in a direction and a price that I want to open the new trade. So first I'm calculating lots and we'll get to that last because that's an important function. Uh, but I'm calculating the number of lots that I want to trade in that direction. And then I'm getting the ticket number for the new trade that I'm opening and I'm handling the open trade in a separate function because this is implemented differently for MQL4 and MQL5. So I'm opening a trade in the specified direction for the number of lots at that price. And if the ticket number is greater than zero, that means I've had a, I've opened a trade successfully. 
then I'm calling this add trade function above, just adding that to the list of tickets. I'm setting my direction to be this direction that was passed in. And if the direction that I've just created is an order type buy, then I'm incrementing buy lots by the number of lots that I've traded. Otherwise, I'm going to increment sell lots by the number of lots that I've traded with this plus equals. So now I'm going to go to the open trade function in MQL4. I will cover MQL5, but I'll just go through MQL4 first and then show the MQL5 versions. So in MQL4, the open trade, fairly simple. It takes the direction, the number of lots and the price. Ticket is returned by the order send function in MQL4. I'm passing in the symbol. This is a global variable, remember? Um, so I pass in the symbol, the direction, number of lots that I want to trade, the price, and then I'm setting my slippage, stop loss, and take profit to zero. Passing in the trade comment, and I'm applying the same magic number that the original trade had. And then I'm simply returning that ticket number. So again, simple function here for the open trade for MQL4. So that completes the add new trade. And as I said, we'll leave lots to last because that's an important function for calculating the size of the trade. Now, almost to the end of this class, we have the close position. So this is where I've detected that we have reached the top of the, or the zone target high or the zone target low. And we want to close the position or your EA might decide to simply close the position by calling this function. So the first thing I'm doing is setting the status to closing. So once we come into this function, I know that I'm trying to close the position. I'm creating the result variable, that's the S zone result type. And I'm initializing that to say that success is true. Let me just go back up to the definition for that. So here's the S zone result. So once I've created that variable, I'm initializing it to say success is true. So I'm defaulting to success. Uh, volume is zero and vol profit zero. Okay. So once I've got that initialized, I'm then calling the close trades function. This is also something that's different between MQL4 and MQL5. So I've implemented that in the subclasses and passing the result variable. And so each of those will populate this. And when it returns, if result success, so if that is still true, then everything is closed. I have had no failures in trying to close individual trades. So at that point, I can resize the tickets array to zero. I can set the status to closed. Now remember the on tick. If I go into on tick and the status is closed, it will simply exit. If result doesn't come back as success true, then the status has already been set to closing. So the on tick the next time will simply say, I'm already closing. So it will just go straight into the close position and attempt to finish closing the trades for the position. So only when I get result success back, which means all of the remaining trades have been closed, then I'll get a close status back here. And I simply return then the result of that. So let's just look at the closed trades for the MQL4 version. And here it is, closed trades. Here's that result variable being passed in, and it's passed in by reference, which you have to do, but also it's the way to return the values for that. Uh, and this is a fairly simple loop. For the size of the array of tickets minus one, so I'm starting at the last and counting down. So for i equal array size tickets minus one, as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, and using i minus minus, counting down. First thing I'm doing is checking that the ticket in that position is not zero because if I do close a trade, then I actually set that to zero. So I'm skipping over any that were closed in an earlier iteration in case this is called more than once. Then I'm simply attempting to select that ticket number using this order select ticket and select by ticket function. And then if I'm able to close that, so once the order select has been successful, and if it hasn't, then you can see the next statement here is success is false, which says that there's a trade that I couldn't close because I couldn't select the ticket. So then if order close for that ticket, passing in the order lots and the close price, if that is successful, 
then here I'm setting the ticket number to zero so that if I do come into this function again, I don't attempt to close that ticket a second time. That's this test here. And the result volume then using plus equals, I'm accumulating the number of lots that I've just closed. And if the order type is an order type vol, order type buy, then this vol profit, I'm accumulating the number of lots multiplied by the difference between the close price and the open price. So that's for a buy, close price minus open price. If it's a sell, then I'm just reversing that open price minus close price. And this will be important in a later video because this effectively gives me a positive negative number and shows how far my unrealized values are. But for this basic zone position, it's not too important. And I will describe this again later when we get to the third part of the series. Um, and assuming that that's fine, then I can just carry on. But if I fail this order close, then again, I'm setting success to false. So any failure in closing or failure in selecting an order will set the success to false, which means that the next time through the loop, the zone position class will attempt to close again. So now the, the lots function, and this is essential to calculating the size of each new trade to make sure that I'm creating a trade large enough that I don't lose or if because of some rounding or because of fluctuations in spread, I don't lose a lot. So first I'm just creating a working variable called lots. Then if I'm buying, I already have some sell lots in that um, global variable that I've been accumulating, but those sell lots are going to be losing because I'm now in a buying position. And if I reach the target at the top of the zone, the zone target high, then I will have lost on those sell lots by the sum of the target plus the zone size. And then I'm also adding in this little bit extra that I'm allowing you to set up. So that's the total loss, sell lots by the sum of the target zone size and the supplement. And I'm dividing that by the target size to tell me how many total lots I need in the buy direction to offset that loss. But then because I already have some buy lots open, I'm just subtracting that from the number of lots that I need to open. So this first part will calculate the total number of buy lots that I need, and then I'm just subtracting the number I already have. And that tells me how many lots I need to open in that buy direction. Uh, if it's not an order type buy, then the calculation is just reversed. I'm now multiplying my buy lots, which are the losing lots, by that same total loss dividing by the target size, and then I'm subtracting the number of cell lots that I already have open. And then finally, because I need to make sure that my lots are a number that I can use, uh, and that's why I created that volume step, I'm using this math ceiling. I'm rounding the number of lots divided by volume step up, and then multiplying by volume step. And that will effectively give me if the lots are already at a valid, a valid volume step number, then it will return lots. If they're in between, it will give me the next step up. And then I just return that as lot. And the last thing I need to do in this class or in this file is to include the other files as needed. So if I'm compiling for MQL4, and this is a compiler variable that's set up, underscore, underscore, MQL4, double underscore, then I'm including the MQL4 header file. And if I'm compiling for MQL5, then I'm including the MQL5 header file. And I'm placing this at the end because these files refer to this C zone position common class. And that way all of the functions they might use are already defined before I include them. So I'm here in MQL4. Let's just try compiling that to see if I've, right, and that's compiled without errors. And that's all of my MQL4. So the three functions that are different between MQL4 and MQL5, the init position, because it's attempting to obtain information about the ticket using order select, order close time, order type, and so on, um, and all of these values, that is different. Open trade uses order send in a different way to MQL5. 
so I have to write that as a separate function and close trades because again it's using the order select the order close which are different in MQL4 and MQL5 so now to complete the MQL5 version all I need to do is recreate this with the MQL5 equivalents of these functions so let's look at the MQL5 now so this is the zone position MQL5 header file um, comments are the same still has property strict first thing that's different I've included the trade.mqh file this is supplied with MetaTrader 5 but it's not supplied with MetaTrader 4 uh, and it makes trade activities in MetaTrader 5 a little easier than using the inbuilt functions so I'm including that because I'm going to use this trade object and then I'm defining the class as C zone position just as I did for MetaTrader 4 uh, and public inheritance from C zone position common I forgot to also include the zone position.mqh file. Protected members now, I'm adding one new member variable here, which is type C trade, and that is defined in this trade.mqh file. I'm just calling that trade. Now note that I'm not defining this with a pointer. If I define it with a pointer, then I later need to use the new function to create an instance of that object. But because I'm only using one copy of this trade, and it's basically a utility class, I'm able to just declare it as a variable without the asterisk. And that means that I don't need to use the new statement. There is already a variable of this type existing. In fact, this creates a variable called trade rather than a pointer called trade. It's a subtle difference and probably not that relevant. Um, but it also means that I don't need to worry about destroying this at the end. So this will be automatically destroyed when this class terminates. The same three protected function definitions in position, open trade, and close trades, and the same constructors that I had for MetaTrader 4. So C zone position, I'm taking the target size zone, size zone supplement, and I'm simply calling the parent class C zone position common. Now, the first different function, init position, because the um, position functions are different for MetaTrader 5. And I've got this open in the MetaTrader 4 editor so you won't see the highlighting. Um, but the first thing I'm doing, position select by ticket. I'm asking, can I find the ticket number that's been passed in? And if I can't, then I'm simply saying, I could not find that specified ticket, and this is going to fail. The other tests that I had in MetaTrader 4 are less relevant here. I, in MetaTrader 4, I tested to see that that ticket wasn't already closed, but in MetaTrader 5, the position won't exist if the ticket's been closed. Um, and the position can only be a buy or a sell position. Individual orders can be different, but positions are only buy or sell. So I know that I don't need to make those two extra tests. And then I'm capturing the same member variables, symbol, trade, comment, magic number, and so on. But in this case, I'm using the position get functions. So get string for the symbol, comment, and magic number. or So get string for the position symbol and comment, get integer for the position magic number. Uh, the direction is also a get integer, but I'm casting that with parenthesis enum order type parenthesis, and that converts the integer value back from this position get integer into an enum order type. And the initial price and initial volume, then I'm using the position get double function for price open and volume. And then also I need to set the magic number. This trade variable holds the magic number internally. So once I have a new position, I'm in this init position, I want to set the magic number of that trade object to be the same as the magic number of the ticket that was, or the position that was passed in. And then I just return true. The close trades function, still passing in the zone result. And I'm still looping through my array of tickets in the same direction. So for i equals the size of the array minus 1, starting at the last element in the array, as long as i is greater than or equal to 0, and counting down with i minus minus, still testing to see if that ticket is 0, which means that I've closed it on an earlier iteration. But then I'm calling trade.positionClose. So this is the close method supplied in that trade object, passing in that ticket number. And if that's successful, because that returns a boolean, then, as before, setting ticket number to zero, accumulating the volume, and there is a trade.result volume function that tells me the volume that's just been closed. 
And this is not strictly correct, but there is really no equivalent. What I'm trying to get is the difference between the opening price and the closing price. To do this for MQL5, I'm saying if the order type, so casting the position get integer position type, now that will give me the position type for the current position. As I said in the beginning, this is for a hedging implementation. If this were a netting implementation, there would only be one position for the currency. But because I'm hedging, I have multiple positions open. So the last position that has just been closed, I'm getting the type for that using position get integer position type. And if that was a buy, then the vol profit is trade result volume, which tells me the volume that's just been closed, multiplied by the result price, trade.result price, which tells me the price where the position was closed. But then I'm going back to position get double of the position price open, which should be the right value to get for the opening price for the position. But the documentation doesn't give me confidence in that. So that's why I say not strictly correct. So that calculates the volume profit. If it's a buy, if it's a sell, then just like with MetaTrader 4, I'm reversing the direction of the closing price and the opening price. And just as before, if trade position close failed, then I'm going to say the result is false. But there is no select here. So with MQL4, you select an order and then close it. So I'm simply saying result is false if the position close failed, but I don't need to worry about selecting the trade. That's all handled inside the position close method here. And then return. And then the open trade method, passing the direction, number of lots and the price, setting the ticket to zero, and then I'm calling trade.position open. So using the function from the trade object, passing the symbol, direction, lots, price, stop loss and take profit of zero and the comment. And then that will return a Boolean to tell me if the position open was successful. And if it is, then I'm getting the ticket number from the trade dot result order value and returning ticket. If this fails, then ticket will still be zero and I'll return a zero from this function. So those are the differences for MQL5 and Although I can normally compile inside the MQL4 editor, because I'm including this trade.mqh file, which simply doesn't exist in MQL4, I'm going to have to go over to MQL5, open that before I can compile this. So now I've opened the MQL5 editor. I've got the class here. Um, one thing I noted that I made a mistake with, I had an error here on line 70. Uh, where it said result dot result that should be result dot success. I fixed that now. So let's just try compiling this. And that's compiled without errors. So now let's go on and create an expert advisor to test these. All right, I've created two expert advisors here, the MA cross ZR.MQ4 and MQ5. Uh, I'll go through the MQ4 first. I'm not concentrating on how the expert advisor runs. This is a simple moving average cross expert advisor. Uh, the focus here is just on implementing the zone recovery class into this. So I've included the orchard classes zone recovery zone position dot MQH. Now remember, this is the parent class, this is the zone position common class, but because it then includes the MQ4 and MQ5 versions, this is the file that I need to include to get access to both of those. Uh, then I've simply got inputs for a fast moving average and a slow moving average. So I'll use for the moving average cross. And then here are my zone settings, input target, zone size, and that supplement that I want to add in. These are not in points or pips. So I'm setting it to 0 0.01, which would be if I'm trading a Euro US would be 0 0.01 Euros. Um, and the zone size 0 0.004. If you wanted to enter these in points or pips, then you'll have to do the conversion back to the currency value yourself. Standard inputs then, order size, I'm beginning at one. I 
typically begin these demonstrations at 0 0.01 to start small, but because of zone recoveries need to have rounding and multiplication factors, I need to start with something bigger. So I'm starting with one, uh, typical trade comment and magic number. Then I'm declaring a variable of type C zone position. So remember again, the, the include files for MQ4 and MQ5 both define their class names as C zone position. So this is what I want here, a C zone position, not the C zone position common. And that's a pointer to a zone position class. So then on initialization, I'm going to set up the zone position object. And that's just by calling new C zone position and I'm passing in the target size, the zone size and the supplement size. So once I've done that, I have an object that will handle a zone. All I need to do after this is create a trade and pass that trade in with the open position function. And because it is an object variable of pointer type, in the dinit I'm going to call delete zone position. Now the on, on tick function, first thing I'm doing is calling the zone position on tick. Now if I haven't opened anything, it will just say it's already closed and exit, so that's no harm to call that but I need to call that on every tick, as I explained earlier. Uh, if it's not a new bar, then I'm just returning. So I'm not doing any further work inside the expert if this is not a new bar. So the zone position takes care of its on tick functioning. And then the rest of the expert advisor is looking for a new bar to determine if there has been a moving average cross. So these are the standard getting the moving average values, getting a ticket number, and then if the zone position status with the get status is closed. So here in my expert advisor, I'm checking to see if I don't have a position open. If there is no position currently open, and then I'm checking to see if I've actually had a moving average cross. And if I have, then first thing I do is open a ticket. And this is the MQL4 version. So this is the order open function, passing an order type by. And if it's a cell moving average, or if I've had a cell cross, then I'm opening order with order type cell. Open order function is further down. And then if I have a ticket number of greater than zero, so ticket was initialized to zero here. If I've gone through one of these statements successfully, then the ticket number will be greater than zero. So I've had a trade and all I do then is call zone position dot open position, passing in that ticket. And from there on, the zone position object will handle that ticket number, whether it's going to close in profit or cross the zone and then go into a recovery mode. Uh, the rest of these new bar is the standard function to determine if I've just had a new bar created and this function to open an order. This will simply take the order type, the stop loss and the take profit, which are zero in my case and just open an order. And this is specific to MQL4 and there is a version in the MQL5 copy of this file. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go into the detail of that. These are standard functions for trading. Um, this is about showing how zone position works. So the key things are create the zone position object, use get status to determine if it's closed, if it is closed, and this is my rule for this particular EA, I'm not going to open a second position and a third position while there is one open. So I'm waiting until this is closed. And after this is closed, then at the first trigger point, I'll open a new trade and then call the open position. And after that, simply by calling zone position on tick, it will manage everything for me from there on. Uh, if I have a look at the same, fun the same file in the MQL5 version, it's very similar. I've included this trade.mqh because the expert advisor itself is also opening trades. So I want a trade object here. The inputs are the same. I need to include these handles and buffers to obtain the moving average values. Uh, I won't go into this in much detail. I'm declaring an object of type C trade as I same as I did inside the class because I need a trade object. These are all setting up the moving averages for the fast and slow setting as series so I can count from zero to the left rather than zero on the, so I can count from zero on the right to the left rather than count left to right. Uh, and then still zone position is the same call. 
new C zone position, passing in the target, the zone size and the supplement numbers. And then this trade, I'm setting the magic number to the input magic number. Uh, on D init, because it's MQL5, I need to release those two indicator handles and as well delete my zone position. And then inside on tick, same thing here, zone position dot on tick, that comes first. So it handles every tick that comes through. The zone will determine whether it needs to open an opposite position or close down completely. And then still, if it's a new bar, then in the case of MQL5, I'm doing the copy buffer from the fast and the slow handles. And then I'm just getting the values from those buffers. Initializing a ticket to zero. The same condition here, if I currently Status, if currently the status is closed, then I can open a new trade and I'm just looking for a moving average cross happening. And if one of these two statements is executed successfully, then I have a ticket number. And if the ticket number is greater than zero, then I can just call open position on the zone object with that ticket number. So that was a quick run through of the MQL4 and MQL5. Again, not focusing on how the expert advisor works, the key points are initialize a zone position object with the new C zone position call, and that sets up the zone object knowing the target size, the zone size, and the supplement value. Then at each tick, call zone position on tick. If there's nothing open, it will exit quickly. It's just as quick to call on tick and have this exit as it is to check whether there is a position open already. And then before attempting to open a new position, check to make sure that the current position is closed. And if you do open a position, just pass in the ticket number. So now with the MQL4 version, I think I compiled this already, but I'll just do that again, yes. Uh, and now I'll go to MQL4 and just run it and show you what happens there. So I have MT4 open here. I've got the strategy tester for my MA cross zero zone recovery. I'm running this on a four hour chart. I've got the spread set to 10 points, which is reasonable for commission plus spread on Euro USD, trading Euro USD. I've set the time for 2020-0101 to 12.31, so the full year for 2020. Uh, and I'm gonna run in visual mode. Just look at the expert properties. The inputs, these are all defaults, fast moving average, slow moving average, profit, supplement, all of those are the defaults that I left in the code. And I'm starting with a $10,000 account. So I've started the strategy tester. The blue line is the fast moving average and the white line is the slow moving average. So we just need to wait for that to cross before it will trade. So now the fast line has crossed below the slow line and we've made a sell of one unit. So I can show in the results here, I have trade number one, sell one. And I know because I've run this several times that that will go up and down a little, but eventually it will reach a close for profit. Now you can see here, the fast moving average crossed above the slow moving average, but because I have a position open, I didn't open another position. So that was built into the code. And now finally that cell has reached a close here and closed out. So that was a single leg. Uh, there was no need to implement a zone. So now we need to wait for the fast moving average to cross above the slow moving average before this picks up again. Right, so now the fast moving average has crossed above the slow and we've executed a buy trade. And now the price has gone below the bottom of the zone. So it's opened a sell trade of a size 1.41 lots to offset that buy. And at this point, we've reached the bottom, of the bottom target. So we've closed both the buy and the sell trade the buy being one lot and the sell being 1.41. If we look at the graph, you can see here, this was the first trade. We closed out at a profit because there was no zone implementation. 
But then the second trade, we've had the sell that made a profit and the buy that made a loss. And we've come out close to even on that. So that's the point of the zone recovery, zero loss. It's not a profit making technique. Let's just watch it again. If I let this run a little bit, there will be a section where we go through multiple legs. Now I've just skipped forward a little to show this to you and I'll zoom in here. Hope you, hopefully you can see it. The fast moving average crossed below. And so we opened up a sell trade at this point. So that's where the price was. But then in the very next candle, the price crossed the top of the zone. We opened a buy. And then in that same candle, the price went back down below the bottom of the zone. So another sell opened. And then in the very next candle, moved above the top of the zone and opened a buy. And then three candles later, it's crossed below the bottom of the zone again. So we've got one, two, three, four, five trades opened already. Uh, and we're still moving in this ranging market. We should be able to see that in the results. Here are the five trades. We started with a sell of one, buy at 1.41, then sell at 0.99, buy at 1.4, sell at 1.98. And these are starting to grow now. So that's just demonstrating that the class will handle opening multiple legs and it will keep doing this until we either run out of available funds or reach a close for that position. And I guess now the final thing everyone wants to see is how does this turn out at the end of the year? So I will also skip ahead and show you the results there. All right, at the end of the year, there is the graph. And if we look at the report, total net profit of $6,018.91 from an initial $10,000. So surprisingly, a reasonable profit on this one. If you check the graph though, you can see that most of that profit was made in the first few trades. After that, we had a couple of successes, but an awful lot of just trying to break even. So that's the end for this tutorial, the second part of the zone recovery series. Uh, in this, I've basically shown a standard class that you can use to manage the zone recovery positions. In the next part, I'll show some variations that you can implement to change the way this operates and have a different trading style. If this has been useful to you, please click the like button. And if you want to see more videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we release more videos. So until next time, thank you for watching.